Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the new normal. I'd like to welcome a uh, beautiful guest um, and my co brother, Anchor, um, who are joining me in studio today. Let me first introduce our new guest on the show. I'm joined by a uh, beautiful sister. Uh, she is uh, very well accomplished and I must say, a professional. I was reading on um, your bio and something that I picked up ne neuro linguistic programming practitioner and oh. life coach. I was Abigail Simono. Yeah. Did I say it right or yes, it Simono? Yes, Simono. That's Simono. correct. Simono. Yes. That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, Aus Abigail Simono is joining me on numerous occasions. She's been invited to various organizations and companies to speak to employees, employers, on how best to position their thinking for life challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has more, many, 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 many talents in the field of IT as well. Um, I was very elaborate CV, and it's beautiful when you see sisters so young with multi, who are multi-skilled and talented and take mm -hmm. their profession so serious. I'm impressed. Uh, welcome to Thank you. THD. Thank you. Touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, let me welcome my dear brother, um, Bishop. Marara. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should have ro drums rolling yeah, as well. Yeah, let's get going. Let's yeah. get going. Yeah. Uh, Bishop Marara needs no introduction. Um, he received a love letter from the Seventh Adventist <laughs> Church. And the love letter goes like this. To all our congregants and fellow saints, do not subscribe to the teaching of a man that is awakening your spirituality because you might awaken your thinking to such an extent that you will no longer be domesticated and colonized. So subscribe to the very same book that keeps you under what you call, and the best person who did that was Aristotle. He speak about slavery morality versus master morality. Those who subscribe to slavery morality, they need, they need this superior being who will always punish them when they do wrong. But those who subscribe to master morality kind of teachings take life and their destiny in their own hands. And these are the type of people when you surround yourself with, you start realizing that you are a leader in your own right. So Bishop Maponga, I want to thank you for igniting that leadership or, or, or sparking that thought that I can take matters in my own hands mm -hmm. and see the God in me to reproduce and recreate, mm -hmm. as the Bible says. It takes dogs to produce dogs. Mm. So donkeys will produce donkeys. Yes, sir. And chickens will produce chickens. Yes. So once you put God in the equation, Anything less than the maker, Ooh. it's not it. Ooh. You can say that again. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm also going to welcome our callers. You're more than welcome to call on 011-883-3343. I want to thank everyone. And I'd like us to recap on last week's conversation. We spoke about crime of uh, crimes of passion because we were addressing the escalation of violence against our sisters in society. And I felt that it's high time that, you know, this conversation evolves. Mm -hmm. But most of these atrocities that we see people committing come from a point of fear. Yeah, yeah. And today we got to break those mm -hmm. limits of fear. Mm -hmm. I think <coughs> when individuals decide to want to be violent or attack somebody, mm -hmm. there's something incomplete about you yeah. as a perpetrator. And we're dealing with such day. Mm -hmm. We're going to break those limits. Mm -hmm. Bishop? Are you ready to yeah. break those limits? The community we are coming from, from all angles, has has injected fear in all of us. Yes. To an extent that our young people, our marriages, our careers mm -hmm. are managed by limitations. You can't do this. You can't do that. Yeah, yeah. I know, for example, from where I'm coming from, without mentioning the name mm -hmm. of the church, if you are a sports person, kiss your career goodbye. Because the church will not allow you to do your, your exercising on, on, on the day of worship, on Sabbath. What? For example. Yes. So yeah. if you are into soccer, if you are into any sports. So basically the church has got skilled young boys and girls who actually will not cross over to, uh, to, to, to realize their potential of their skills. Ma, ma, ma. Based on their religion. So religion can also be a limitation. Why are you afraid of doing that? Because your church will marginalize you. Your community will no longer, your father will kick you out of the house. Yes. Because religion becomes the, the war. Now it makes sense. Beyond that, mm -hmm. you cannot explore. <laughs> it makes sense, Bishop. I had a team building exercise uh, with some of my team at work. Mm -hmm. And we hosted them on Saturdays. But there was this very competent 
um, staff who could mm-hmm. not make Saturdays. But mm-hmm. she kept on dodging. No, we're having a funeral. We're having a wedding. Mm-hmm. We're having baby showers. Till we got into COVID. Now, you can't say that you are going to a wedding <clears throat> under this pandemic. Then I was later disclosed that no, Sabbath. So there are political limitations. Mm-hmm. There the are economic limitations, there yeah. are religious limitations, there are cultural limitations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and all these things build themselves into the consciences of the young and the old. So you only work within the confines yeah. of the safe space. Mm-hmm. And, but I'm happy you chose mm-hmm. this subject for today because it pushes us slightly out of our comfort zones as to how do we break those walls and push those limitations Beautiful. slightly further so that we can actually realize our full potential. Indeed. Let me quickly ask um, us, Abigail. Mm-hmm. Do you think that limits stem from fear? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, limits do stem from fear uh-huh. because fear is something that in your head you tell yourself you cannot achieve something. Mm-hmm. So the minute you, in your head you are full of fear, absolutely you're going to limit yourself in terms of wanting to go for the dreams, whatever that you feel like you want to achieve. Right. So it, it does um, come from fear. I think one aspect of it, seeing well, that is the topic for tonight. Mm-hmm. But another aspect of limits could be from lack of information, lack of access, lack of knowledge. Right. You know, and sometimes it's withheld from us, but I believe leaders are readers or readers are leaders. So if we don't go out and read and get the information and interpret it ourselves, yeah. then we are limited. You, you obviously ex- at some point experienced and encountered your own fears. Absolutely. Even and today. Even today. <laughs> and, yeah. and, 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 and you stand here, because in society, hey, life coach, life coach are immune yeah. from problems. They're oh, immune from fears. No way. So you are dealing with some fears yourself. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I am dealing with my own fears. Uh, a big part of the fears come from uh, the environment that I grew up in mm. and my upbringing. And um, it's actually quite interesting that I'm sitting here tonight, sitting and speaking to you guys with with regards to fear. Right. When 2020 started, before we even thought about COVID and whatnot. Don't say you saw I did, it. <laughs> I didn't see it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no. I was going to put I you in that other it. group of guys who said, I see no, you no, no, in no. July no, and no, it no. will be a good year. I yeah. didn't see yeah. it. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions because my life doesn't start on the 1st of Jan. Okay. So I just continue and I ramp up if I need to. But for 2020, I put a theme and mm. that was courage for myself. Mm. To, to Courage to, to go for things that I am most fearful for. Courage to have the difficult conversations. And that takes me to a conversation that I've had recently, actually, with my mother and growing up she was very abused I grew up in a very heavily um, abusive environment where everything happens explicitly right in front of you wow. and as a result fast forward to me being a, an adult I'm very fearful about a lot of things from my upbringing but fast forward to me being an adult we don't have synergy we don't have a good relationship because of the upbringing that i've had you know but recently i have challenged myself to have the conversation with her and i'm very very lucky that she was open to having the conversation and it just ties it ties to the theme of 2020 being the year of courage it's, it's sanitized you yeah it's sanit- i'm still sanitized <laughs> as we speak so um life coaches are not immune to problems um, and uh, for life coaches that think they are immune to, to, to problems, then you are not human. Mm. I, I absolutely believe that there is no human being that is immune to problems. And we all have our little fears somehow that we need and, to And what she's coming. saying is very critical. Mm-hmm. Because what happens is that when you, when you witness and you live in those viol- violent environments, mm-hmm. it, it grows into you. Absolutely. It, it creates for you the future that mm-hmm. you are going to live also. Mm-hmm. It creates realities Mm-hmm. To an extent that there are some people who come up from those environments and when it does not happen, it feels like something is wrong in this space. Yeah. Because you want to recreate yes. your reality yes. in, into, into, and project, yeah. you project your fears you know, right? into a new relationship. You can yes. even contaminate a good relationship based on your previous, your previous fears. So it's, it's a reality. Mm. It's a reality. Mm. Try maybe help me. Mm-hmm. It took you years to even, first of all, have the courage to want to sit your mom down and have this conversation. But do you think 
seeing what she went through mm -hmm. caused you to resent men at some point? Yes. Um, it caused and me... And you're happily married today? Oh, I made that choice. Interesting. So it comes back to very, very happily married. It comes back to us making a decision at some point. Yes. So I remember maybe run about 14, 15 years old, I made a decision that I'm not getting married. Uh, wow. um, these people, if this is what they do, they abuse you. And remember my friend, my mom also had friends that are going through similar thing when they having a cup of tea or they getting a get together. It's like, oh, nah, it's a it's, yeah, it's a mm. club, you know, mm. but it's not a club, a progressive club of how do we get out of this? Mm. It's like, it's the norm. We're gonna sit and that was their new and, normal. Yeah, that was their new normal. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> you know, that was their new normal and that was their constant normal. So yes, it did it did somehow affect. And, and as and I'm listening, Bishop, mm -hmm. I need your help. Because Abigail's situation at some point caused her to reach a conclusion about life. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately and, and fortunately she broke out of that conclusion. Mm -hmm. What about that person, Bishop? who makes permanent decisions on temporary circumstance? I want to recommend to that person that they must, uh, this is winter time. And from an agricultural perspective, you trim your trees and then you paint them. Yes. And the leaves fall off. Right. You, you trim, mm -hmm. you trim down. Yes. And don't think that that bush that is standing there looking dry is dead. You're just waiting for a season. Mm. Right. Wait to rain again. Hallelujah. Preach and it, Bishop. The branches will start shooting again. All right. And for you to place yourself in a temporal environment. And mm -hmm. I mean, I would not be sitting here, Tapas. Yes. Had I thought of myself in the, in the 70s when I was heading my grandfather's cattle. Yes. Walking yeah. bare feet with the, with the trousers that had LPs on the bums. Yeah. And then with my feet that were white yeah. from, from dust mm. and et cetera. And would, you'd see buses passing by. And I was wondering, where are they coming from and where are they going? In and the who evening, are you in, in the evening? You're just seeing some lights 100 kilometers away. There's, there's a city there. Right. And had I used that fr framework, and by the way, I still go back to the village and I find some of my friends I grew up with still stuck in that environment. Yeah. And they're still pointing to the city lights there, but I've Ish. gone beyond the city lights. <clears throat> yeah. So when I'll, you're in an environment, in a situation that seems limiting, Point number one, understand your environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After understanding it, get the hell out of that environment. What if you don't have the means to get out of there? Mm -hmm. Abigail, what, Actually, if, yeah. what if you couldn't think your way out that's, of painting men as trash, painting men as pe predators? Yeah, yeah. That's where uh, I think life coaching comes in. Yeah. I just need to put it out there that the difference between mentorship and life coaching is that mentorship says, I've been there, yeah. come with me, I'll show you, don't repeat my mistakes. But life coaching says, I've got techniques that will help you see beyond where you are. Take you from point A, where you are, mm. Bishop in the farm, to point B, where mm. you are in Santon, okay. inside Touch HD Studios. Right. You know, but it's, it's, life coaching is about taking you out of what consumes you so that you can see perspective and I say, see. actually, it's possible. And a lot of work that I do, even though it's very career related, it's about taking people out of that yeah. situation because a person can get so consumed. Let's talk about the biggest cancer for African people. Yeah. And that's poverty. Mm -hmm. If there's one thing mm -hmm. we struggle mm -hmm. to disconnect or cut the umbilical cord with, it's poverty. Mm -hmm. I got, I, I have friends whom I know, Bishop, Mm -hmm. Are way smarter than I am. Mm -hmm. Are way witty. Are way they they gifted, far gifted. Mm -hmm. I cannot measure gifts, but I know intellect. They were smart, mm -hmm. but for some reason they still chose to live and die in Shabville. Mm -hmm. I was born in the Val. I'll die in the Val. Mm -hmm. Will not give themselves the opportunity to jump. Let's talk about people who are married to their salaries in community of property with insurance. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sis? Mm -hmm. And now during these retrenchments, mm -hmm. people are well, far happening. more vulnerable and protective. Yeah. yeah. Was, what, what is beautiful about life? Yeah. Life is beautiful with its beauty and its difficult times. Mm. What happens is when life throws a curveball mm -hmm. and destabilizes a comfort zone. Yes, sir. Those very same people right now, let's say in Sharpville, there's an earthquake or there's a fire 
or those houses, something catastrophic, catastrophic happens. Yes. You'll be shocked when those guys snap out of that environment into a new space, mm -hmm. which now requires them to dig mm -hmm. into their skills. Mm -hmm. they, might, they might actually come out. So it's comfort zone. It's a sense of community and, and complacency mm -hmm. and wrong relationships, okay. wrong wrong counterparts, emergency. When mm -hmm. around, you're staying in court, you're staying in what, and you, 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 you normalize poverty. No one likes poverty. So we normalize poverty. Yeah. You, you could have normalized abuse mm -hmm. and said, till this day, mm -hmm. I'm not marrying anybody, I'm not getting mm -hmm. a relationship. Mm -hmm. but prior to your marriage, mm -hmm. there were those relationships which turned to be casualties as a result of your upbringing. Innocently, the poor guy was written off or dealt with. The highway. Because he triggered. I didn't have a lot of those, but I have to be honest that I've got an extremely supportive husband. Beautiful. We 13 years married this year. Wow. And, and so I didn't play around, to be quite honest, mm. because... I realized because of the situation, I'm raised by a stepdad, he's abusing my mother, mm. I don't have options. I cannot afford to make mistakes. Mm. So I had to focus on my career and that was it. And it was, for me, it was career and making sure that, oh, my mom can't leave the situation because this guy is taking care of her, right? So I have to make sure that I take care of myself. Mm. So by the time um, I, I met my husband, I had made a decision, no, guys can be can be good, you know? But a big part of the beginning of our marriage, yes. he had to remind me, it's not the, you know mm. what I'm saying? Right. I'm, I'm not your dad. Right. Because he would be, we'd be playing pillow fight. Right. And I get all apprehensive because now he's male and I feel like, eh, Allah. eh, eh. It feels like what, what my mom was going Allah through. You know Sometimes what I'm saying? Sometimes I want to put a brick in so, the pillow. So oh, he's... <laughs> <laughs> so he's the casualty shoes. in essence. <laughs> he's the casualty in essence. Um, yes. But but he stuck it through. And I remember um, during um, courtship stage, while mm. we were preparing to get married, right. I remember me saying to him, "You lay a hand on me, we are done." Wow. So it does affect your relationships, but you need to get to a point where you make a decision and realize that this person is not where I come from, uh -huh. and I'm going to actively work on myself Beautiful. to have a relationship with this person. And, and to break that is not, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it, it's it's a, a serious mental exercise. Is it a reason why, Bishop, people are struggling with breaking old habits yeah. and finding this pandemic season? Old habits, a, are, old habits are beautiful to us. Old habits are beautiful. They are peaceful. They give you, they give you predictability. They give you, until an old habit becomes discomfort. Yeah. It, yeah. Many times we even yeah. think that, sorry to say this, many times think that church is a magic place. We can just go stand in front of a pastor, do you accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior? Amen. Mm -hmm. And you think that from an amen, a person will stop smoking, yeah, yeah. you stop womanizing, mm -hmm. you stop drinking because the blood of Jesus has performed a miracle. No. I have no doubt that the blood of Jesus can perform. But if the blood meets intention, yes. and the person who has lived a life, and they really want to change, then they use that as... As the break, as, as as a tipping point, correct to say I made a choice. But mm -hmm. many times and often, you stand in front there and you say Amen, Amen, until your habit becomes discomfort. It is easy to win people away from smoking. Mm -hmm. The day you tell them that you have cancer stage one, uh -huh. tonight they will quit smoking. Why do I need to have something catastrophic to alarm me of the dangers of the wrong things that I'm doing? It seems to me God must rebuke me bad. For me to because stop. Because the human body, the human body and the system, mm -hmm. unless life is threatened yeah, and, yeah. and unless unless you feel mm -hmm. you, 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 your life is in danger, why, why change? Mm. What, what, what's the difference? Mm. There's, there's a saying, absolutely, there's a saying that says change happens yes. when the pain of remaining the same is less comfortable as more than the pain of having to change. Repeat that one more so, time. The pain of remaining the same yes. passes the pain of having to change. Change happens. Mm. Mm. But for as long as remaining the same is not painful for you, mm. change will always be more painful for you. Did but you? if I had to stay, just before we went live, I said to you, I was weighing 129 kilos. And I said, I don't believe you. Today. I don't believe yes. you. I don't believe I'll show you guys. Pictures. You lost 50 kgs. Yes. So the pain had to be enough 
for me to say I'm going to stop eating wrong and I'm going to start exercising. What? I'm gonna, I'm Do you know how delicious is custard and jelly? I know. You have to cut it. <laughs> I cut it. <laughs> so the pain hey. of being in that 129 kilograms body yes. was just too much yes. for me. Mm. So the pain of waking up at 4 a.m. and exercising was no longer uh, too much compared to the pain of being the same. You know, you yes. the pain of saying no thank you at birthday parties when there's a cake uh, was now no longer as bad as remaining as 129 kilograms 29 year old yeah you know Forward. so 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 for as long as the pain of remaining the same is not painful enough mm. people won't change oh yeah. shout out to my sister katrina kane and shout out to muzi underscore feka uh big shout out to katleho mukat yeah katleho muta i see you as well i'm gonna take calls on 011 883 we just we're dealing with breaking limits mm. and the reason why we stay in the same situation mm. two years ago the reason reason why last year June yeah. you were in the same situation as you are this year is because we are afraid to break these limits. Mm -hmm. I also want to put you punch your hole there to us. Please. Until the African community. Yes. Corporate wise. Yes. We have, we finally get tired. Yeah. Of this borrowing of this employment. Yes. Of this slave mm -hmm. colonial system. Okay. Until the okay. African until we as black people mm -hmm. finally yeah. say enough, enough is, is enough. enough. Yeah. The economy will not change. Right. Yeah. We needed enough angry in a positive way. Angry Africans who will say constructively. No, no, no. This this issue of interest, this issue of bank charges, mm -hmm. this issue of eating junk foods in corners. This issue, it it stops here. Yeah. That's how revolutions are created. This issue of homelessness. Where, where, yeah. where, where young man who is doing his third year in college yeah. will take his books and throw them to the teacher and say, "I'm going to the bush to fight." Even education loses taste. And here we are, creating a revolution where people want, want change and they want it now. Do you think it's out of fear? Because let me tell you, I come from a family that education is the cornerstone of everything you do in life, okay? Mm -hmm. But I realized that it was out of fear. Yeah. They were so adamant about that. And the reason why I say that, I have so many family members that are way educated than I am. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I won't finish the sentence. <laughs> and Bishop, you are well learned. But we find ourselves having the fear. I made a conclusion today. I concluded today. So if my son comes to me and say, I want to be a photographer, I'm going to support him. Same here. I don't need him to be a doctor. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Is it out you know of why, fear? You know why you want to make mm -hmm. a doctor? Because in the back of your head, we're fantasizing about being a doctor. Uh -huh. Now you could not make it uh -huh. as a doctor. Mm -hmm. Now you inject your same fears and your same frustrations mm -hmm. into yeah. your son and yeah. you torture this boy until he becomes what you failed to become. Yeah, mm. yeah. So again, education in terms of his structuring, the colonial education, is a pathway of the colonial system. Mm -hmm. You must give in your time, your devotion, mm -hmm. and with the, with the retirement package and the whole fluffy stuff, when you retire, you'll be like this. When you die, I'll give you a, a, a death scheme. How many people are learned out of fear? Like, you literally went to school because of fear for not having a mm -hmm. career. The fear of not being able to tell guests who come to your house, mm -hmm. oh, come, come, come. Nico, come tell them. What did you study? You know how our parents make us mannequins. Oh, gosh. Oh. You must become like this other one. You yes. see, this one is studying. You know? Mm -hmm. Look at your sister. Mm -hmm. She studied Con this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because if my mom can sacrifice her last cent every month mm -hmm. to ensure that I get that degree, mm -hmm. why can't she sacrifice the same to help me start a business? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Some of us don't have it to sit in a classroom. Mm -hmm. Maybe we, uh, mm -hmm. we are entrepreneurial. So yeah. we're going to take calls. Um, yeah. uh, is it out of fear that we find ourselves in this position? 011-883-3343. We're going to be taking calls. I got some people calling in, but I still want to ask everybody who's joining us on Instagram, be part of this conversation because mm -hmm. who we are today, we are probably a product of fear. Mm -hmm. Yes. You got married too early because you were told that you're not going to mm -hmm. have a baby out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. So you said yes to what you could have said no to. Now you are stuck with a no. I will uh, throw another un uncomfortable cave ball. Yes. It's possible that 60 to 80% of people sitting around churches are afraid of hell. <laughs> <laughs> They're afraid of hell. 
because they know that, that, that that's so it's that's, not it doesn't they, they are really worship and religion it has nothing to do with the love for God, for God. Fear. they are there because for, they don't want to go to hell love for the mm. precepts and the principles mm. of a good Christian mm-hmm. life mm-hmm. their greatest reason they are in church by a service hoko uti close on fucking little when it is and you cannot drive you cannot drive your life based on fear yeah mm. and hence I'll even say empty mm-hmm. the churches yeah. and let people who understand what this thing is all about we cannot be an incubation house mm. of fearful people mm. is it the same reason why people stay in hurtful relationships in abusive relationship yeah. because yeah. they are scared bishop if you, yes you are not there because you love the person love is gone you no longer love the person anymore i know people who still take a pay cut because it's comfortable yeah yeah to know that come the 25th of the month i have an appointment um, with something that i'm no longer connected mm-hmm. to that's difficult because again in our growth we've not been taught multiple streams of income yeah yeah so the fact that you have only one source of income ties your shoes mm-hmm. to that one stream that is coming mm-hmm. but tell me in the event people are living less quality lives to us mm-hmm. yeah poor quality lives mm-hmm. because you cannot tell me that for your for your entire life and expression mm-hmm. you are bound to a job that you hate mm-hmm. because of the salary that you are get, mm-hmm. you, are, you are getting and you cannot snap mm-hmm. out of that space and say how do mm-hmm. i diversify and plural myself and once you have enough money it was i love money for a simple reason yeah. it gives you <laughs> options, options. Yeah. it gives you yeah. choices yeah. i saw another poster the other day this woman mm-hmm. says i'd rather be crying holding a prado with a prado handbag yeah. and sitting in a, in a convertible bmw it, it's, a, it's a better sort of, even my tissue paper is expensive than, than crying in poverty so yeah. we all love resources because resources mm-hmm. give us opportunities and, and give us decisions correct you cannot be in a relationship because of poverty yes mm-hmm. then you're no. you're you marrying below your, your your capacity hello <laughs> not even dimakatso welcome hi how are you i am blessed thank you for joining us let's hear your I'm comment well. i'm well my comment is very brief um i think i'm gonna echo the sentiments of the lady in the house when she said um our bringing molds us to become the other the adults that we are um i was raised by a single parent or not a parent but a grandmother uh, lost my parents at a very young age and she echoed to me that men um trash basically because she she was in a very abusive relationship and marriage for about 15 years so i grew up having that mentality <laughs> and i carried that with myself for the longest time into my adulthood it's only in my late 20s that i realized that i need to find uh, my truth about men about me about wow. um about life and i literally had to unlearn a lot of bad habits a lot of reckless childhood teenage rebellious habits behavior and i think that's what that's how we suffer as as adults because we carry out these uh, baggages into our, our adulthood from childhood and we don't know how to let go of that because it's so comfortable it's so nice That's you know true. the reckless the reckless drinking the occasional sleeping here and there yes it's so com- it's so comforting you know and we don't want to confront that about ourselves and it becomes so problematic that we face depression we face every single horrible thing and it's only upon sitting with yourself and saying hello di matato you can do better you deserve better and you can walk away um, I, 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 i i salute you for that di matato you said yeah. something profound You said mm. something about it dawned on you when you started, you know, owning your own space. Yes. And you said, "Ma, you took charge of the situation." Yes. What Hello, inspired you? you? He said, "Hello, Dimakato." Yeah. yeah. You know, that's Hello. personal Hello. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Spoke to yeah. Yes. You spoke to I yourself. To say, What did I you I had to say I had to say, "Okay, I think I think upon having my first child, um, and I looked at this guy, he's a man or rather he's a boy, but I had to raise a man." and and me being a better woman who was raised by a better woman i cannot raise a man who's going to fully function i had to choose differently because i need to allow my son to thrive in a in a better mind space and you know because mm-hmm. because he he was not going to function if he he's going to raised by a woman who believed that all men are trash and all men are this and all men are that so i you're just to- given birth to another trash exactly <laughs> 
I, I couldn't allow myself to believe that. So I needed to walk away from that and I needed to unlearn that. I needed to escape from that bondage that I was raised in because I was literally raised in it. So um, long story short, I echo with the lady uh, and Bishop, I, I, I absolutely love your work. And yeah, she was, thank you for the show. And yeah, you guys are doing great work. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful thank you. What a beautiful thank testimony. So thank, thank you. you. Thank the reason why we have these conversations, uh -huh. I think these are tiny little prescriptions better than what the pharmaceutical can give you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. all the biggest breakthroughs I've had in my life mm -hmm. started with the conversation. Yes. Mm. Bishop. Mm. Oh, Abigail, mm -hmm. I dealt with a lot in my life. Mm -hmm. See this guy here? Mm -hmm. There's nine lives in me. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you right now, every moment, every moment of a breakthrough mm -hmm. didn't just come from a beautiful bottle of wine. Yeah, yeah. It didn't come from flying first class. Mm -hmm. It didn't come from pushing the meanest four pipe convoy. <laughs> it was a conversation. Mm -hmm. And most of those conversations, you know who I had it with? Yourself. Myself. Mm -hmm. mm. When we grew up, I don't know to anybody watching, anybody watching right now, I grew up in a home. I grew up in a community. Mm -hmm. I grew up around people who said, Wasanya, when you talk to yourself. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Till today. And you, you got afraid. Those, uh, those yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I promise you. So I grew up thinking, hey, they can't see me, but they're But, but then, they start back on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> it is Honestly, like you're heading there. You know? I had that. Yeah, yeah. So I had this fear. Mm -hmm. It would be, hey man, mm -hmm. why am I having this introspection? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Till mm -hmm. I read somewhere, I think his name is Carl Young. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Psychology. Mm -hmm. Psychology, yeah. Carl Young, eh? Yeah, he's Carl Young. Till I read, good yeah, hey man. It's therapeutic mm -hmm. to talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's therapeutic. Mm -hmm. You must. You must have a relationship mm -hmm. with yourself. You must have a relationship I mean, with yourself. I, I, I had mm -hmm. a funny conversation outside of this space, of course. I met up with uh, Ugogo um, Majola for yes. one of the, she's a, an indigenous uh, mm -hmm. healer. Mm -hmm. And she, we were talking about the health of the, of the woman, mm -hmm. you know, and she, she, she raised something which, which made me giggle on the show and I could not hold myself. Yeah. He said, ladies, you need to have a relationship. Yes. With yourself. Absolutely. Then I, th I thought I had heard it. He says, no, you didn't hear me. Yeah. You need to have a relationship with, with the lady. <laughs> you need to sit down and put a mirror and have a conversation with her and see if she's happy, if she is, if, and, and deal with her issues separately from yourself because she's in love. And I'm, I'm going to hold myself. I'm going to hold myself. But in the midst of that, what I hear is personal conversation. And in my book, uh, So You Want to Be the Master, yes. there's a chapter I did there about self mastery. And I'm excited, by the way. Your books are going to be released on our, on our podcast. Oh, thank you. I can't wait. There's I'm a excited. statement I put in that book, the, yes. I think, on self mastery, yes, where I put a comment that re reads, uh, uh, if you cannot kneel in private, mm. you cannot stand in public. Absolutely. Private conversations lead for public appearances. Yes, yes. Something like that. Yes. End of quote. Going, um, <laughs> Man. What you said about you used to have very difficult conversations um, with yourself. One of the things that I do and teach a lot of my coaching clients, I hope one of you guys, please call in, yes. is that in the morning, before anything happens, yes. you meditate. Meditation is about, yes, stillness, but it's also about having those conversations with yourself and saying, what about this? What Can about I tell that? You? What about that? Oh, Abigail, I fully, I cement what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I cement, I concretize. In fact, I put steel over it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what messes up my day? Mm -hmm. And I had to realize this over time. First thing when I wake up and I find myself on social media, mm -hmm. my day is done. Yeah. I'm messed up mm -hmm. because I wake up to perfect people mm -hmm. when I know I'm not perfect. Yeah. Mm. I wake up to amazing. You haven't centered yourself. I haven't, you haven't had I, that time. We have not. We haven't mm -hmm. dealt with this guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a very good friend of mine. I traveled with him to Nigeria. Um, I don't want to mention names for the sake of not name. I don't want to name drop, but he's, he's well known. Everybody knows him. Mm -hmm. And um, he says something remarkable. Mm -hmm. He said, take my hotel room key because I'm not going to get up at the time you need me to wake up. But when you come in in the morning to wake me up, mm -hmm. um, say my name and say name. I don't wake up to my name. And even my wife knows. I don't wake up to emergencies. Says, it takes me 20 minutes 
to have a conversation with my ancestors while I'm in bed. <laughs> I don't know how to wake up under emergency. Mm-hmm. So don't wake me up and say, hey, chief, we have to go. Uh-huh. Says, mm-hmm. you need to firstly, when you, when you get, on, get, get in, mm-hmm. say my name and say name. Mm-hmm. And then maybe to click the someone here. <laughs> but don't walk straight to bed and say, hey, chief, get up. And I didn't understand that. Yeah. So yeah. later when we were having lunch, I said, why do you want me to say your name and surname when you wake up? Why can't you just wake up? How do you wake up at home? He said, listen, I have to have a dialogue with my ancestors. Mm-hmm. And normally the reason why I have a hard time waking up is because they are probably saving me from the misery of the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'll take longer in bed. Mm-hmm. You call it sleep. I call it the highest level of meditation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's two things in life when it comes to spirituality. If you want to slide there, yeah, there's what we call a um, uh, two consciousness. Mm-hmm. When you are physically awake, mm-hmm. you are spiritually unconscious. Mm-hmm. When you go to sleep, you become physically unconscious mm-hmm. and you become spiritually conscious. Yeah, mm-hmm. therefore, life is a journey between two consciousness, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. If I'm struggling with trusting myself over my own choices that mm-hmm. I inflict upon myself, mm-hmm. how do I break out of that? This you would have to deal with choice by choice, case yeah. by case, yeah. right? So maybe you have general trust issues yes. because of something that happened, yes. not necessarily the partner that you have currently. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you have trust issues. For instance, in my home environment where I come from, mm-hmm. I, I, I can say I have a lot of fear. But when it comes to my career, because it has been so successful, okay. both yeah. corporate career and my coaching career. Shout out to you. Yeah, thank yes. you. Nice. <laughs> has been successful. I've got no fear whatsoever. Mm. Sometimes we're not willing to do the work. We want overnight. I saw, is it Jennifer Hudson or who is this lady, the, the white yes, lady Jennifer. that... You're putting bandages on your tummy. No, no, and no all that lost things. weight and she broke the internet sometime mm. this year. Adele. Adele, yes. Adele lost weight. Yes, yes she, did. yes, she did. So yes, you did. So you want to see her last Instagram page when she was singing and she was uh, 50 kilos more and the le- next Instagram page she is like 50 kilos less. Yeah. But you don't know the work that has went in it. True. So we do not want to put in the work. Mm. But to go back to how do you trust yourself, you start analyzing. In a coaching session, I'll take you through a process to get to the bottom of which area specifically is the trust? Mm. Because this is very general. I can say to you, you're sitting very comfortable and confident in, in front of that mic now. Yeah. Do you trust yourself? Uh, right no. now? Not until, I, I knew I, didn't, I don't trust myself till I said I won't do something and I did it on Sunday. Yes. Do you want me to tell you what I did? Yes, please I do. walked past, if you know the Infant Square, mm-hmm. there's this Italian confectionery. Mm-hmm. I'm allergic to gluten. But I saw this amazing chocolate cake mm-hmm. through the window. Mm-hmm. I went to this game to buy gluten pills mm-hmm. to stop the allergy. Mm-hmm. And so I that said, you can have the chocolate So I can have the chocolate cake. Mm-hmm. So I said, if I'm going to go down, let me go and rescue myself. First, right? <laughs> I, I went and I tweeted it. I put it on Twitter. Check my timeline. Uh, two, uh, two I said, I can't. <laughs> no, I said, I can't. But I took a picture and, and I said on Twitter, <laughs> I said, deliver me from, I said, Lord, deliver mm. me from the evil I like. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, my word. Mm-hmm. Tibos. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't tell me that one. I, I'm would, telling you, Bishop. I would have joined you. <laughs> <laughs> the way it looked, it said, Pegamina Take yet. me home. Yeah. <laughs> said Pegamina But yet. isn't it funny that sometimes the most beautiful things in life yes. mm-hmm. that may look attractive to us are actually not good for us? Yes. yes. You know, Very true. Life, life, good mm-hmm. times. I, there's a song that I once said, this is good times don't make good people. But it is the difficult times that, that actually squeeze the character out absolutely. of you and something good comes Ooh, out mm-hmm. of you. So I like that. Mm-hmm. And there's your gluten oh, like there. That. There's mm-hmm. your gluten that would destroy mm-hmm. you. You'd rather get tablets mm-hmm. to, 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 yeah, no, to no, no, deal no. with the problem. This was very strategic. Mm-hmm. I bought the pills, so I was ready for the mm-hmm. consequences. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I, went, I ate the cake mm-hmm. nicely. Mm-hmm. So as I started picking up, the gluten is reacting. Oh. Oh. I even mean, had yeah. two bishops. Two tablets. Yeah, two tablets. To make sure. Just to make sure. Mm -hmm. And there are people who will do the same thing Mm -hmm. with what's eating them. Mm -hmm. They will take, they will find some way to Mm -hmm. find comfort in what's uncomfortable. If I was in law, I would would have called that premeditated murder. Hmm. You you literally Ah. thought through your murder Ah. case. (laughs) 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 Then I identified the subject (laughs) and I said, that's it. We are going to take, Mm -hmm. but these things happen, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. Abigail. Mm -hmm. And a lot of young girls, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to put this out there, ladies, Mm -hmm. please, I'm not coming for you, Mm -hmm. but a lot of young girls have fallen victim Mm -hmm. of what influencers 
project this perfect life and no longer mm -hmm. wants to deal with the ordinary. You said mm -hmm. Adele posted herself losing weight. Mm -hmm. What about those people who share the results, but mm -hmm. they don't share the process? Yes. And exactly. we follow people because mm -hmm. of the results. Of the results. But you don't, don't want to go the through the three years yeah. of consistent. Do you take your clients to it when you do the life coaching? Yes, yes, yes. So life coaching deals on one topic at a time. You don't come in like in therapy and you're all over the place and you're just telling stories. Yeah. You come in and say, I don't trust myself with cake. And mm. we deal with you don't trust yourself with cake. Mm. Why don't you trust yourself with cake? What was about that cake that attracted you? Yeah. What space of mind were you in when you saw the yeah. cake? Was it because COVID is coming? Is it because there's lockdown? And then we, we dig deep in terms of that specific case. That, that you have brought into the coaching session. We don't move to the next step yeah. until we have dealt with one specific outcome that you want to get. Bishop, what about you? Have you confronted your limits, fears? Do you have them? My fear was that when I grew up, yes. when you are light in complexion, you are, you are acceptable. Yeah. When you are dark, yeah, then you know, you, you're, you're, it's gonna be challenging. Yes. So, <laughs> I grew up. You can see I'm more more melanin. So, yes. so I grew up actually not liking being black. <laughs> you have and natural sunscreen. And our yeah. aunties went to town. They put on ambi. They were dark like me. They came back like this. Now they have maps of Africa, Africa on their cheeks. That, that's a story for another day. Oh. But but I, I grew up actually being scared of being black, mm -hmm. sort of thing. And I would try also as much as possible stay on the shade and what. Mm -hmm. and, until I go mm -hmm. to Kenya. And I, I read the story again in one of my books until I go to Kenya and I found guys from Egypt. I found guys from Sudan and southern parts of Ethiopia. Yeah? They are the, here yeah, in terms yeah, of yeah. height. They are here. And yeah. they're darker than you. The you, you, only thing you can see is their teeth. Yes. <laughs> and if you take a white cloth and you move it on their face, you actually, it, it's not just dark. It's dark and velvet. You might think if you wipe the face, you might actually come come out with, with no. that that complexion. That, yeah. You have not seen a dark person to us. I have seen them. Genuine velvet. That, that one is a, it's a group. Genuine. You should have seen me after the lecture in the lecture hall. Yeah. When I was going home that night, I was dancing and I was jumping. And, and I, he felt and good. I, like look, a I looked myself in the mirror. You were like, in the world ball. of these guys, <laughs> ugly horse <laughs> trade. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to so in comparison, in comparison, sometimes and in traveling, yeah, you actually be able to see th things in a different perspective. And that's when you confronted your own fear. I come back and if, so if, now if you say you're you are, Maponga, you're dark. Yeah. The first thing I ask is, do you have a passport? Well, I know a place I can send you, which got dark people. Me? But that's... But also dark... What is the... Bontle, hi. Good evening all the way from hi, Soweto. Hi. How are you doing? Thank you for joining oh, us. Thank you. I'm actually listening to the conversation. I'm like, mm, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it on the other line, you know? <laughs> can tell. Thank you for calling. Let's go straight to um, So, yeah. So, I think my, my fear has always been um, shining into the bright star that you're, you're destined to be as a human being. You know what I mean? And by saying that, um, I'm talking from a business and career point, right? Because when you start something or when you go into a career, or maybe let me start from school. So you don't do well and you, you then don't go into medicine because you then want to be a doctor. You know okay. what I mean? And then you must kind of find your path into it and then you fall onto something, you know? So I fell into the PR and the entertainment world and I thought to myself, yes, I'm going to make it. And then I wanted to make all these connections. But I always used to feel that I'm inadequate, you know what I mean? Because I cannot degree um, from varsity or from yeah. college or whatever and everything that I did Nikki Tuda, you know so even from that it was okay how do I apply for my next position how do I grow even then I then started businesses you know what I mean businesses failed and you had or people we called mentors and people would tell you that yeah um, you're not good enough because uh, you can't do A, B and C you can't do A, B and C or you don't know a touch or you don't know mang mang you know what I mean and I'm looking for somebody who's cool and really rapid so my fear was always being told oh, I'm inadequate because I don't have the college degree and my fear was always I'll probably never be able to run a business because I don't know the right people and I don't know um, where to start, you know. But over the years, you kind of learn that um, your circles or the things you teach yourself, because right. everything I've learned 
on my like everything I've learned has been self taught because of the internet, because of conversations. I also didn't I was I, I didn't respect have that. the confidence. Yes, you know. I also didn't have the confidence, you know, because you always get told Hori, you're not good enough. You know, and when you do when I did build my confidence I came out, and when I did came out, I kind of shocked the world because... You talk about when you build your confidence. What did you do to build your confidence? Did you get a better man? Did you read a book? So Uh, the the funniest thing is that um, I left an abusive marriage. So I was in a very abusive marriage. It kind of contributed to uh, my confidence levels, who I am, the people around me, and so forth. My ex-husband was is also in the industry. So he knows the touches, the mapongas, the mangmangs, the mangmangs. And every time I would meet them, I would meet them as a partner. You know what I mean? We're not but, but, yes, yes, but also from that, how no we are touch? Litach are now treated the same way as, oh, kind of when I'm sorry, was mangmang, you know? And people don't give you the time of day. Until social media happened, where I was like, actually, let me go start my stuff, right? On social media. That's do what my I need to girl. Do, right? Do what I need to do, and people will follow suit. And uh, from 20, I think from 2009, 2010, when I started my NPO um, stuff, I was still not so confident. But after my, my, my marriage, which is the past two, three years or so, after leaving that uncomfortable space, I had to find myself. I had to heal. I had to know who I was for me to stand yeah. up and say, yeah. okay, yeah. now I'm ready. Wow. Now I'm over my fear. Wow. Even if this man comes, Kastunia, or whatever it is that he's going to come with, I am still able to overcome it all. And again, Emma Mobile and say, kill me now, it's okay, and we'll deal with whatever we need to deal with. Do what you need to do, you know? And I think a part of that also, Bishop, comes with... I had to go through a journey of spirituality because spirituality also means understanding who your true self is, you know, understanding everything that is you and why you had to go through the hardships for you to come out a shining star again. Oh, well said. Well said. I can take that home with me. What a beautiful comment from my sister. I have something I want to share to us. Yes. With the listeners out there. Yes. How do you know that you are stuck up? Hmm. Is when you are sleeping on the same side of the bed for the past 10 years. Okay. Facing the same window, and you are, you find it difficult just yeah. to shift the bed once in a while. Just make it ma- make it face the other direction. Change the place where you're sleeping. Yeah. Change the way you dress. Yeah. Change the way you look at things. Change your diet. Bishop. Just just do, do do some small little changes. You may be shocked to discover that some things that you say I can't I can't do this. You actually can. can. Fella, take it to the next level. And I'm and I, you know I'm bringing off grannies is the best. Mm-hmm. So I lived in a home, what you call a church home. Mm-hmm. Bishop Molefe, God, he still kept him alive. He's kicking, playing golf at 93. Mm-hmm. As a bishop, we used to have all kinds of pastors. Mm-hmm. Every charismatic preacher you can think of. Maswangwani, Pastor Sorno, anyone you can think mm-hmm. of has been home. Mm-hmm. So the bedroom I used to sleep in, that's the same bedroom the guests you, you know, normally when come When they through. come, you must go to the dining room. So when I come, now, we had all kinds of guests. And this mattress, at some point, I started feeling the spring. So I complained to my grandfather. So, you know, it's painful to sleep on this bed. He says, flip it around. Mm-hmm. The other side, the bottom part hasn't I've got affected by <laughs> <laughs> I flipped the bed around psychologically. I was like, yeah, yeah. it feels like a new bed. <laughs> but it was the same bed. So you're right about being yeah. stuck up. Change, man- yeah. change, change. Any change management. Yeah. You may find that even when it comes to relationship, for example. Yes. You might be stuck up in the relationship and it's no longer making sense. Yeah. Maybe it's the routine. That mm-hmm. as a couple that you are putting yourself into, mm-hmm. you come from work, drop your jacket, sit on the TV, mm-hmm. watch TV, you know, then take a bath, then jump to bed. Tomorrow yeah. morning you're up and you get into this thing for three, four years. And the, 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 the creative side of you mm-hmm. yeah. begins to tell him, no, man, if I could speak like her, I, I could have used the word, no, man, <laughs> enough, enough of this thing. Yeah. And because your mind actually says, I've, I've done it. I've experienced it. Is there something more out there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So hands in, in the we always advise some, sometimes you guys who are out there with relationships, come on, spice things up a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, don't 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 sleep with pajamas and nightgowns and you look like a wardrobe on your way to bed. <laughs> spice it up a little bit, yes. be more happy, put some flowers in your tub, buy some cold. flowers and some, some chocolates. <laughs> yeah. You know, go for a walk in the morning, it's surprise her and say in the morning, let's take a walk. Yeah. And you have never done it for ten years. Yeah. Take a walk. Yeah. 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 
Try new things. I Put like your that. mind yes. in a new paradigm. So, mm. so go back to the same two-room house, yeah. or go back to the same space that you call small, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. go with a big thinking mm -hmm. or perspective. Open. Yeah. 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 Your words in closing. Yeah. I need to break out of limits. I want mm -hmm. to be the best thing after this lockdown or mm -hmm. during this lockdown. Mm -hmm. Under 60 seconds. Look at your mindset. Yeah. What are you constantly telling yourself? You mm. know, we spoke about the conversation that you have with yourself. And be honest. Is it a positive conversation or is it a negative conversation that you're having with mm. yourself? Mm. And should you find that it's a negative conversation that's always saying, I'm fearful. Mm. I can't, I can't, I can't mm. in your conversation. Start saying, what am I going to do about it? Is it really as bad as I think it is? Right. You know, can I look at it from a different perspective? Am I going to go out there and look at my circle? Who can help me look at it from a different perspective? Who can help me get resources for me to be able to change my situation? Mm. Life coaches, obviously, being a life coach, I would say, do, is there people that can help me get out of the situation? I love it. You know, I love but it. it starts, it all starts and ends in your it. head and Woo! the conversation that you have with yourself. I'm a billionaire in my head. And you it's are. about to be. Happy. You are. It's about to be. Yeah. I'm a billionaire in you my are. head. And Bishop, I'm about to be in in, 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 in true yeah. manifestation of life. Yeah. With 60 seconds, uh, Bishop. Like a pregnancy. Yeah. Feed your feed your child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Extensively. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let them feed them. Yes. Feed your dreams mm -hmm. with education. Yes, sir. With skills. Mm -hmm. Feed your dreams with time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Develop yourselves. Yes. To an extent when the child is finally full, mm -hmm. the day of delivery will happen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And when, Absolutely. when it finally happens, mm -hmm. it, so in other words, success is preparation, which means opportunity. You know what Tupac's mom said? <laughs> and I had the honor of interviewing her in, I'll think of a year, maybe 2005. She said, because I quote from, um, from a book that said she was a crackhead. And I said, we in South Africa look up to this son of yours called Tupac. Yet, when he was in your womb, I read that you took all kinds of substances to diminish his creativity. Mm. You went through so much abuse, you could have been a stillborn. Mm -hmm. But out of this concrete, a rose grew. And you know what she said? She said, your words, Bishop. I didn't take crack because I wanted my son to be a product of it. I took crack, but I wrote poetry before I go to bed, and I read him poems before I could sleep. And when he woke up, I sang him songs. Wow. And when I went to deal with life as part of my escapism, mm -hmm. I told him I'm about to do things I don't want mm -hmm. you to do. That's why my son never touched any drug. Mm -hmm. We had that agreement in my womb. Mm. Wow. I said, wow. wow. He wow. had to be too wow. Wow. Can we stop there, Tibos? Yes. Can you tell mothers out there? Yeah to have that conversation. Amen. We may produce a different generation. Hey. Yes. Yeah. Hey. And Talk continue having hey. the conversation. If men are trash hey. after they have left your womb. Yeah. Mm. But you can make men when they are still on the other side. I say that because wow. this brings us to the last portion of our show. Mm -hmm. I want to thank my mother who prayed without ceasing mm -hmm. before I came to this world. And I'm a product of prayer. Mm -hmm. And thank God for praying mothers out there. Mm -hmm. Thank God for fathers who are active mm -hmm. and ensuring that they're not bringing anyone into this world to be a product of the same circle of poverty. Mm -hmm. To everybody watching this show, I want to thank my guest, mm -hmm. wow. Os Abigail. I'll bring you again. I love, I love us every day. I think, she, I I think me, and you need, me and you I need a shrink. To. She must shrink us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need, I, need, I need to lose 5 kg. My golf swing is not what it used to be. But I'm really, really grateful. Most grateful to our callers, mm -hmm. the friends wow. who are engaging. Mm -hmm. wow. um, um, our sisters, our brothers who are active Tuesday, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. We'll be back again next week. God bless. Mm -hmm. And um, may you stay protected under this pandemic. Thank you very much to my mm -hmm. team. That's Soweto TV crew, the THD crew. Thanks to our brother, um, Lindo, who's in the process of losing 30 kgs as well. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs>